story this is this morning uh, of Elisha and, and his young men. Uh, what's more interesting um, for me as, as we reason on this thought, uh, we can see as he sees, we can see as he sees, is, is of course the fact that uh, Elisha does not pray about the situation that the young man has brought across to him, but he prays for the young man uh, to see uh, what he does not see. Now, the biblical accounts of God's miracles performed uh, through Elisha and Elijah uh, are some of the most extraordinary and exciting ones that are found in the Bible. So this account that we are reading this, this morning of Elisha and the Syrian army, of course, is no exception. Throughout this story, there are just two things, just two things that God uh, seems to clarify very clearly for, for, for us this morning. And what are these two things? Number one, that God is able to protect his people by his power. God is able to protect his people by his power. In other words, he doesn't need anything outside himself. He does it on his own and the way he sees it. But number two, which is very critical, is that God intends to teach us to see our circumstances in the light of his ability to see us through. I know it's still early in the morning, the brain cells are still trying to, to, to wake up. Let me repeat this one because I don't want you to miss this part that in this story that God intends to teach us to see our circumstances in the light of his ability to see us through. And these are the two things that Elisha had learned. And as a result, saw God doing great things in his life. And these are the two things that I really would love us to learn. Uh, these are the two things that I believe God wants us to learn as we, as we journey through life. With this in mind, uh, I want to, 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 to also quote the book of Prophets and Kings. This is page 254. Listen carefully on this one, what the author says in this book. Prophets and Kings, page 254. She says, it was because of his love for erring Israel that God permitted the Syrians to torment them. Mm. It was because of his love that he allowed the Syrians to torment Israel. Then, and then she says, it was because of his compassion for those whose moral power was weak that he raised up Jehu to slay Jezebel and all the house of, of Ahab. Once more through a merciful providence, the priests of Baal were set aside and their heathen altars thrown down. Now, now this, is, this is where it catches my attention also. It says, God in his wisdom foresaw that if temptation were removed, some would forsake heathenism and turn their faces heavenward. And this is why he permitted calamity after calamity to befall them. His judgment were tempered with mercy though, and when his purpose was accomplished, he turned the tide in favor of those who had learned to inquire after them." Unquote. Very interesting yeah, is that, you know, sometimes um, things happen in our lives as things have happened this week and, and probably last week, last month, the last few years. And we wonder why such things happen in our, our lives. And when you read the story of, of the Syrian army that sought to attack the children of Israel, you begin to see that, that actually the story the, of, of Syrians, the plan of Syrians to attack was just, was really not about the Syrian trying to attack Israel, but it was, it was a, about God trying to demonstrate to Israel that he is well able to protect, to care for his people. And that number two, that also God was trying also to show that in their dire situation, 
they needed to learn that God was able to see them through. Now, two things that I want to share this morning, then we close. Principle number one is that what God allows, humanity can go through. What God allows, you and me can go through, can go through that. Now, now verse 15 of our scripture this morning says, and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone for, behold, he's a host, he saw a host encompassing round the city with horses and chariot. And the servant said unto him, my master, what are we going to do? He was scared. I mean, what he saw was very troubling, just like we see and experience situations that seem to be beyond uh, ourselves. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, that there has no temptation taken you by such as is common to men, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above and beyond that which you are able, but with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So in other words, my dear friends, that uh, whatever befalls us, whether it's sickness, whether it's, it's, it's your family situation, uh, whatever it may be in your life, uncertainty about your future, uh, you name it. Now the Bible assures us and the story assures us as the young man goes out and he sees, and he says in essence to Elijah, look, this is beyond us. And I don't, really don't see how we're going to survive beyond this. As a matter of fact, I can hear the young man says, uh, you, you know what, Elisha, we may, we may as well quickly write our obituaries here because the next thing we are going to see is resurrection morning. But, but what is interesting though here, uh, when you look at, 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 at what Ellen White says in the book of, Pro, of, of uh, Prophets and Kings that I just read, page 254. And, and when you look at, at, at what the author says here is that, uh, well, number one, that uh, these things God allowed them because of his love for us, so that he may be able to divert our attention from our Syrians, but to his ability to deliver us from what we are going through. So in other words, uh, uh, God is trying to remind us one, one way or the other with the challenges that we go through that, look, I am bigger than these things, number one. Number two, I'm not only bigger than these things, but I want you to see me uh, in the light of what I can do for you in the midst of your Syrians that you may be going through. I don't know what Syrians you went through this, this week. I don't know what impossibilities you've been experiencing, the, the pain that you have gone through. I mean, there are times where we pray and as we pray, it looks like it becomes worse. But, but, but the lesson that God is trying to teach in the midst of all these things is that sometimes because of his compassion in our weakness, he, he, he then teaches us that, you know what? Trust me, trust me in the midst of all this. Don't magnify what you see. And it is that reason then, then Elisha in verse 16 begins to pray and say, Lord, help the, help the young man to see as you see. And, 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 and what I like in, 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 this, in this story here, in, in, in verse 16 and 17, when, when Elisha prays and, and he says to this young man, look, don't be afraid because those that are with us are bigger than those that are with them. And, and, and I can get to the sense that the young man does not get it. He does not see that. Because then after that in verse 17, then Elisha, then the Bible says he prayed. But I like this part uh, uh, because it's like Elisha now turns his attention from the young man to the Lord and says, as if God, uh, and if God is a person, is there with them, is part of them. And he says, Lord, please do me this favor. Just open this, this young man his eyes to see. What do you mean, Elisha? Because the, the young man sees the reality because um, when he opens, when God does what he did at the time, indeed, what he saw, God confirms, 
But Elisha also does not deny what the man, what the young man sees, but then contrary to what he agrees with the young man, but then he says, Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord, then the Bible says, and God opened his eyes and the young man saw. But this time when he saw, as Elijah says, is that the young man then began to see something very amazing. Now, now here's the second principle that I want to close with, is that uh, problems are necessary, are a necessary vehicle for our salvation. Problems are a necessary vehicle for our, for our salvation. Now, what do I mean by that? You know, problems are like a washing machine. They twist us, they spin us, and they knock us around. But in the end, we come out cleaner, brighter, and better than before. You see, Albert Einstein says, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when, when we created our problems. So, so this morning, I'm saying, therefore, as we go through what we have gone through, as we come here for prayer, God is trying to install in us a different mindset that will enable us to see him the way he would want us to see him. I mean, you can't come to prayer session and walk away with the same mindset, having prayed and, and wondering in your mind, did God hear my prayer? I wonder if this is going to work. And you come the following day, same mindset, still still anxious, still wondering, and so on. Same mindset you had before. So when we come to God, we must, we, we must understand that problems, just like a washing machine, they, they will twist us, they will spin us, they will knock us down. But in the end, as we trust, as we pray for God to help us to see, as the young man had, was not able to see, then we begin to see that God is able to solve our problems is bigger than what we, we, we go through. My dear friends, when the people of God are brought to impossible situations and, 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 and there is no escape for them or for us, God alone must be our dependence, nothing else. You see, sometimes we strike longer because we've got other things that we can put our hopes in them because we have other people that we can count on that can pray for us, that can support us. And, and as we do that, the problem lingers longer. The, the washing machine process, the spinning, the, the, the knocking us uh, uh, becomes longer. But when we, when we find ourselves in difficulties that are beyond us, and we make God our only dependence. I'm here to say this morning, then that situation gets resolved. And so sometimes, my dear friends, so God allows these things for our own salvation. I submit to that for when you go through whatever you have gone through, you may have gone through this week or you are going through now, ask yourself this question, Lord, what is it that I don't see that I need to see in my situation. And I believe this morning that many have seen this week as we prayed throughout the week. And we're here, Makunene, to say thank you, Lord, for having blessed me to see what I needed to see in my situation. We're here to say thank you, Lord. Now we see that problems truly are a necessary vehicle for our salvation because if it had not been what we went through, we would not have seen God the way we see him this week so 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 number one, number two which was was number one principle number one and that is now i now i know i can testify that what god has allowed me to go through i can indeed go through because god was with me i may have been in the washing machine i may have been spinned twisted knocked but i now know by faith, I am cleaner, I'm brighter, I'm better than before. Ellen White says in the book, Prophets and Kings, page 256, that between the servant of God and the host of men, 
was an encircling band of heavenly angels. They had come down in mighty power, not to, not to destroy, not to exact homage, but to camp around about and minister to the Lord's weak and helpless one. Listen to this one. Listen to this one. That when the young man opened his eyes, when God opened the young man's eyes, he began to see that, whoa, by the way, God's army is bigger than the Syrian army that I thought would annihilate us. And, and she says, and then she says, look, by the way, the army, the uh, God's army that the young men saw was not there to fight the Syrian army. It was just there to encourage the weak and the helpless. The servant of the Lord says, we are surrounded, the young men. But Elisha says, ah, ah, we are not surrounded. They are surrounded. The young man said, we're in trouble. Elisha says, no, we are triumphant. So my dear friends, I want to say to you this morning, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. In the battle of life, we can lose a round or two. We can be knocked down. But Jesus knocked down the devil at the cross. I'm saying, therefore, here is the fact that the battle has been won. Elisha prays and he says, Lord, let the young man open the eyes of this young man. And I'm praying this morning that God may open your eyes indeed. I thank you for being part of this prayer this morning. I thank the Lord that he's going to open our eyes. And I thank the Lord that he's going to help us to see the way he wants us to see the way he sees so that when we are assaulted by our Syrian armies, that we may remember that he that is with us is greater than he that is with them. May God bless you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Can we pray together? Yes, Pastor, pray. Our Father and our God, we are grateful this morning that, Lord, we realize that uh, even in our hopelessness, your presence is available. That, Lord, the fact that we find ourselves hopeless and helpless is because we don't see the way you want us to see. Therefore, this morning, I pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you may truly open our eyes at all times so that we can see that even in the midst of assault in our families, in our personal lives, lives, in our spirituality, that, Lord, you may open our eyes to see that even this situation is my vehicle for salvation. Even this situation that we have allowed to happen, Lord, I can, by your grace, go through it. Oh, yes, this morning we thank you, dear Lord, that your grace may that your grace does not allow us to go where it can't go with yeah. us. So thank you, dear Lord, for your love. Thank you for your care. Bless us as we go through this session of thanksgiving. So we have every reason now, Lord, to say thank you because we know what we're going through does not mean that you have forsaken us. Just help us to see as you would want us to see in Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen, amen.